I um I don't know if you guys like watching building videos. Like sometimes I get stuck. Like you ever been on YouTube and you wonder how did I get here and it's like 2 a.m. And people are building houses, you know, these guys over in another country, and they're building houses out of mud that are bigger than my house. And I'm like, how do they do that? And this is really weird. And I watch these guys. I was watching the other night um, a stonemason as I was thinking about this. Very interesting. They laid the corner, and the stonemason started working, and I was watching him. He took out a hammer and a chisel, and he started chipping away at one stone. Yeah, gets another stone. Mm, Nope. Yep. You know that you don't shape yourself. Listen to me. You don't get to say, well, I guess that's where I fit. That's another one of those pictures. Why is that stone there? Like, why is that sticking there? That's odd. It doesn't fit. Who puts us in place because of who we are is Jesus himself. He's the corner, right? He's the corner. He's the one that helps us build this spiritual house that we're in. He shapes us. He chisels it off. He fits you perfectly. What we don't like is the chiseling process. Amen? But we know that we're a living stone and we're building a spiritual house. Not just personally. Not just personally, but Christ. And corporately, but Christ is the builder here. And he invites each individual Christian to enter into that with him. I want you to be a part of my spiritual house. I want you to be a part of what I'm doing. You know, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, it says this, don't you know that you're God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? A temple doesn't build itself. Christ is building the temple in you. You are the temple. The Spirit of God resides there. Interestingly enough, in the Old Testament, there was really only one person that could go in once a year where God resided, the holiest of holies. One time a year for and on behalf of a nation. But because of Jesus Christ, you know, he took that temple veil and tore it. He decided, I'm going to build a new temple and it's going to be in the ones that believe in me. You know that you now are the temple. Uh, Newsflash. And some of you will understand this greater than others. I am not your priest. I am not your priest. No. You know why? Because you can go to God without me anytime. You don't need me. I mean, that doesn't mean I I don't like what I'm doing. You know, hear me. But because of what God has done in you and because he's created this temple that he wants to dwell and because he wants to have a relationship and because he wants to have a fellowship, because you are part of the people of God, you can, and we're going to talk about this in the next couple of weeks, you can enter in to him in his presence anytime, freely. You don't have to wait till once a year. Now, if you've grown up in a church, and you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to uh, bash any anyone here, any any religion really, but uh, in in Hebrews, 
Hebrews chapter 5, maybe, somewhere in there. It says, there are priests that, there are priests that stand daily and offer sacrifices for sins, but there's one, Jesus Christ, who offered sacrifices for sin once and for all, period. I'm not your priest. You don't have to come to me and confess. I mean, some of y'all need to confess, to be honest. I do too. I do too. Right? We ought to take advantage of that more often, of who we are, this spiritual temple that God is trying to build in us, right? So doesn't a temple need a priest? It does. Let's look on. Holy priest, we are made holy priests to offer up spiritual sacrifices. You mean that I'm considered priestly? Yes. It's called the priesthood of the believer. You don't need me. You have your relationship with God. You have his shed blood that allows you access 24-7, anytime. 